Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on live stream music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, come in again. You're very, very welcome. I trust you enjoyed my last video on Degamo and Key. And through that video, we looked at the number 666. Let's just get that number out into the open, out into the light where it can be seen by everybody. Now, most people would know what that number means. So I trust you found that one encouraging as I looked at my take on that particular number. Well, going from there to 1990 in Sweden, Jonas Lynn and Jenny Bergman and Ulk Erkberg. Um, given Sweden, two guys and two girls. So you also know that there's another famous foursome uh, Bjorn, Benny, Agnetha and Anna Fred of ABBA. So the, 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 the foursome in Sweden is quite a popular, a popular format. These guys got together and formed Ace of Base. Um, dance pop, Euro pop, absolutely. And certainly at the start, these guys had, had a bit of touch of reggae in there as well. And um, sort of had a bit of a different sound to them. And there were some pretty amazing songs from these guys, actually. Um, in their hometown, um, heavy metal was 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 the um, was the music of the day, and dance music was not. <laughs> so basically, they just they just kept doing clubs and getting gigs, and eventually they got a bit of a following. Um, their record deal was a bit elusive, um, and but they did um, release "Wheel of Fortune" as a single in 1992, and that kind of got them noticed a little bit. Um, <coughs> This eventually would come off their, their debut album, Happy Feet. Um, so I've got the official clip of that one below. I think Wheel of Fortune is very much you roll the wheel to see where it's going to land. You're going to roll the wheel to see what life is going to bring. And as the bass absolutely rolled the, rolled the dice with that particular song. And that pretty well got them started. And so, um, so record companies then came calling a little bit after that. And they soon they soon they got signed, and uh, I suppose after Wheel of Fortune, Asa Basha really got known for all that she wants is another baby. This came off that Happy Feet, Happy Feet, or the Sign album. Um, this song stayed on um, say three weeks at the number one spot in the UK, and it didn't actually crack the US for quite a long time. But when it did crack the US, it kind of really did crack it. Got to number two on the Billboard charts. Now, the words of these ones now, what have I got? I've got an official and live version of this one below. Um, very much, uh, all she wants is another baby. Is the baby like, does she want to get pregnant by someone? Or is baby mean another lover? Um, it's an interesting song, this one. Ace of Base have just a really good way of writing lyrics. It could be either. Um, when you look at the clip, there's a bit of a predator look to this girl. She's dressing herself up to the nines. She knows exactly what she's going to do when she goes out. She's going to find un some unsuspecting guy to actually um, follow her home. And this is exactly what happened. Why Why uh, is he following her home? Or does she want to get pregnant? Or does she just want to have another have a night? And I think um, always the challenge of... Cause one of the opening lines of this song is that she lives a lonely life. And so, you know, when all the high, the one night stuff, night, night stuff finishes, it's lonely. Because you really want that person to hang around and, and be with you and all the rest of it. So, um, pretty significant song for Ace of Bass. Ace of Bass got a chance to perform at Madison Square Garden. So there we go. It just goes to show that the iconic um, New York, I think it's New York, um, stadium. Uh, where some of the biggest actions the world have performed, to be able to perform there is pretty, pretty amazing. But because the first album was um, was very significant and very popular, the demand it was really truly on the record label was, hey, we need another album, we need another album, we need another album, when are you going to give us another album? And so they thought, oh, for heaven's sake, we need to do an album, another album. So despite the fact they were enjoying a little bit of fame after they'd spent so long um, actually um, in the dark and not, becoming popular to actually get that popularity and to enjoy it well welcome to the record industry the only way that you get popular is through product products or albums so out came the album the bridge in 1995 and so um probably the song that i want to um, focus on 
on that album is Beautiful Life. Now this is an absolutely stunning song, this one. I've got an official clip and a live version of this one below. This was a bit of a departure for Ace and Bass from that reggae kind of feel to a little bit more straight electro pop. And it kind of worked, it really, really does. Uh, the girls singing at the front have got pretty, pretty amazing voices. Very strong, good looking always helps. And they have a way of just projecting these songs forward into our very, very hearts. This is the nature of, of Ace of Bass and what makes them so compelling. One of the lines, I just want to be here beside you. But beautiful life, let's have a look at that for a second. Yeah, you know, life, the world is a pretty, pretty wonderful place, isn't it? I mean, well, yes or no. I mean, there are some elements of the world which aren't good, like the number of refugees that are actually on the move at the moment in the world. We had this horrific earthquake in Syria and Turkey that you only hear about, particularly in Australia, through the United Nations. Um, there's no shortage of crisis spots in the world. Most of these crises are caused by war and conflicts. Some of them have been going on forever and ever and ever. So, yes, it is a wonderful world, but it's not an, an easy world, that is for sure, for, for many people in this world. And, you know, if you are in strife right now and you're watching this video and thinking, hey, Trevor, I'm not seeing a wonderful world here. I, I, well, yeah, I, I get that, and I'm with you on that. We look around us though, I think it was Schindler um, who was a, a, a World War II um, prisoner in a concentration camp who said that he wasn't going to let the Nazis take his pride and self-respect away no matter what they did. He made a decision that he was going to actually um, keep that no matter what and because of that he did survive World War II. I think this is where I want to go to appear a little bit today. And like, you know, in the worst of situations, like a, a concentration camp, it's pretty bad. Or in many of the refugee camps in the world right now, where there's just tent after tent after tent. One of the things that we find in any situation that we're in is that there, if there is a sense of community around us, a sense of camaraderie, a sense of a shared story, it kind of does make a bit of a difference and we can dare to think that the world is a wonderful place again. Um, all you need to do is just look around you, look at the clouds in the sky, the grass, um, the leaves on the trees, or, and to realise that the world is actually a beautiful, wonderful place. There is not one leaf identical to another one in the world. Think about that for a second. That's a pretty amazing thing when you think about it. Um, but I want to go one step further here and look about relationships, particularly if you're in between them a little bit. You might be thinking, wow, if only there was another person in my life, how wonderful would, we, would the world be? Well, absolutely. You know, hold, it's nothing better than holding someone's hand, walking down the beach, whatever it is you like to do. But it's only going to be wonderful if we're together ourselves beforehand. So how much effort are you putting into the internal journey of yourself to make yourself the most together person you can be um, uh, before that next person comes along. Are you just thinking, well, I'll just wait for that next person. I'll put my life on hold until, um, until he comes or she comes. No, the world is wonderful now. Doesn't matter if there's a person or not. The world is wonderful right now. Look up. Look at the clouds, look at the sky, look at the grass, look at the water, just look at, look at the world around you and realise it is a wonderful place. And you know how great to walk in an environment with a world that was already wonderful, to actually walk in that with someone else and it just gets blown away by how wonderful it is. So the world is wonderful right now. It's not wonderful when the next, next person comes along, it's wonderful right now. And you know what? You think it's going to be plain sailing when the next person comes along? Absolutely not. <laughs> it might be good for a start there for a while, but you know what? Um, there's many things that only arise and eventuate um, when, when the new person is in, 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 in your world. And you start to have all these feelings and thoughts and your brain goes in a bit of a whirl because you're not quite sure how, where it's settling right now. Um, it's not easy. Um, but you need that other person in your world to be patient because you're both working this stuff out together, right? And so 
is it, it's important to realize that how can, together can we be? Now, what questions can we answer right now about ourselves? How can we be the best person we can be, the, our wonderful version of ourselves going forward, the best we can be? And then when that next person comes along, it's not like, oh, I really, really need you here. They say, hey, I'm just really happy to be in this life with you. Just take the pressure off it just a little bit because the world is wonderful right now. So I've got an official and live version of that one. The official clip's pretty amazing. This whole whole heap of clips about amazing scenes and amazing things and amazing experiences. So good on you, Ace of Base, for bringing out that incredible song in 95. Between 1990s, now, they did have a break between 2003 and 2006. You know, they had been going at this thing for a little bit of time, so having a break's not a bad idea. But between 1992, 93, and 2010, five studio albums, nine compilation albums. This is what happens when you've been around for a while. Five box sets, four EPs, uh, 26 singles, and 24 music videos. Um, they're the third highest um, CD uh, album seller in Sweden. Obviously, Ava is first, and Rock Set is second. It's selling around 50 million albums, so pretty successful in the scheme of things. Um, they've won two American Music Awards, three Billboard Music Awards, three Grammy Awards. So there we go. Um, and they've influenced such acts as Lady Gaga and Katy Perry, amongst others. So back to the 90s, of course, dance music was all the rage. And this band was well and truly influential in, in just settling that genre in Adelaide, in Australia, in the world psyche, I should say, and into dance clubs all around the world. So I trust that will be an encouragement for you today as you consider that right now the world is wonderful. This world is beautiful before that next person comes along. So if this is your first time, the Life Reflections for Music, or you've come back for another one, great to see you all back. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging around to the end. Well, that's it for today. Next time we're going to go on to this little act that won Eurovision a little while ago, a little while ago, Brotherhood of Man. So until then, I'll catch you around. Bye for now.